Welcome to the Mind Solution Podcast with Sarah Maud. The Mind Solution Podcast is for leaders like you who are passionate about well-being in the workplace because you understand that a strong, resilient and happy workforce is the key to your organisation's success. The Mind Solution Podcast is here to help you So join us every week where we'll share with you powerful insights, strategies and know-how to ensure that your people and your organisation are truly thriving from the inside out. Hello and welcome to today's podcast, which is about hybrid working and how to make sure that you don't remain a caterpillar. Yes, you did hear that correctly. And you might be thinking, what's hybrid working and caterpillars got to do with one another? But stay tuned and all will become clear. But before I get into today's podcast, I just want to share with you an amazing experience that I had this morning, which really was the catalyst, pardon the pun, for today's podcast that really got me thinking, I need to get this podcast out here. So this morning I got up early, I was very good, I'd gone into the living room, I'd done a meditation and when I went back into the bedroom and it was very early so my curtains were still drawn and the the window was still closed and there fluttering away by the bedside lamp was a butterfly. I kid you not, I have no idea how this butterfly managed to get into my room let alone into my bedroom but there it was loud and clear and I thought okay universe I am listening I need to get this podcast out here because it was actually only last week that I'd been thinking about hybrid working and how this model of hybrid working really reminds me of the process that butterflies go through in order to be butterflies. Now, if you're not familiar with that process, I'm just going to take a moment and explain to you the process of what's known as metamorphosis. So metamorphosis is when a caterpillar goes into the cocoon and it has to literally release its identity as a caterpillar. So it's letting go of the old so that it can transform into the new. So when it goes into the cocoon, it begins this transformation and the caterpillar starts shedding its skin and the structures of the caterpillar begin to break down and dissolve. And through this process of transformation, tiny imaginal cells that have been contained within the caterpillar its whole life start to connect up. And this really magical, amazing process as those imaginal cells keep connecting, create the butterfly. A butterfly literally starts emerging. And then when that process of transformation is complete, the butterfly breaks free from its cocoon and off it goes. Now, the reason that I love this so much is because it's such a powerful metaphor for what organisations are going through right now. Because to me, they're not just combining two elements, which is what hybrid literally means. They're not just combining the two elements of home and office working. They're going through a whole process of transformation. In fact, maybe they should have chosen the word metamorphosis instead of hybrid to describe what's going on globally in every organisation. And if you just take a moment to think about where we are now, we might be 18 months further down the line from where we were when we first entered into this for many of us in about March last year. But that doesn't mean that 18 months down the line, we've got homeworking sorted. In fact, far from it. You know, the people that we work with, that we train in different organisations globally, share with us that they still continue to struggle. Now, in some cases, this is down to practical aspects like broadband challenges, 
problems with laptops, cameras, technology. Now for some others, some of the younger generation, the millennial generation, having to share a flat with other people, working from home. For some of us, it's having an office to work from, but then having to share that with our partner, homeschooling. It's just endless. The list literally is endless. And from our observations of working with managers and employees, we've also really noticed the struggle that managers have in being able to really connect with people at that deeper level. You know, the dynamics of the relationship are very different online to what they are face to face. And a lot of people have told us about feeling guilty about when they're working from home, if they go for a walk during the day, which, you know, they say to us, we would have gone and left the office during the day to go and get lunch. But there's something about this home working, this feeling that they have to be just tied to their desk all day, that they have to be available 24 seven because they're working from home. And we've seen, witnessed a lack of boundaries, a lack of effective time management. You know, many people just going from online meeting to online meeting, still, even now, with no time in between to decompress, no time to actually action anything. You know, it's almost like so many people have been on this hamster wheel that they've got on that hamster wheel and they've kept going and kept going and now the wheels are just falling off because it's just not sustainable to work like that. We've seen how many people have been impacted, their mental health's been impacted. So just because we are so much further down the line in terms of time, it doesn't mean that we've nailed home working at all. So having your people, having your employees return to the office a few days a week isn't going to magically address these issues. So what we need to do as organisations is just put the brakes on for a second to take that step back and really ask ourselves what does need to happen. Now it's like, it reminds me of the definition of insanity, that we keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. We've had 18 months of home working and a lot of people have just been doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Hence why so many people's mental health has been impacted. So what I would invite you to do as leaders in your organisation is to be the ones that put on the brakes, to just slow things down, to take that step back and to really ask yourselves, what do your people need in order to function as high performing teams in this new hybrid way of working? because you're gonna have some people that are working on a hybrid model. You're gonna have some people that are actually wanting to be back in the office most days. I know people that are chomping on the bit to get back into the office. You might have some employees that are now going to permanently work from home. We've spoken to so many employees who've literally relocated to a different state within the US and they're able to consistently and permanently do their job working from home. So there's going to be no hybrid working for them. So taking that big step back and seeing the bigger picture. You know, really asking yourself, what does high performing look like under this new identity? You know, people talk to me about going back to the norm. Well, we never really had normal. <laughs> What did normal even mean? This is an opportunity to start again, start with a blank canvas, not to just merge two elements, but really go through a process of transformation to make it work. So what does high performing look like under this new identity? 
And I'm wondering what will let you as leaders know that this hybrid model is a success? You know, what do you want to see and hear and experience within your workforce daily? When you think about your organisation from a strategic standpoint, from an operational standpoint, what is going to let you know that this hybrid model is a success for you? What are going to be those key indicators? What's the feeling going to be within your workforce that lets you know that things are working? What needs to happen to create a culture of inclusivity, of connection, especially in this new way of working? You know, if we've got people that are permanently working from home, how do you go about creating that culture of inclusivity? What do you need to have happen to make people feel like they are part of the organisation when you have got some people that are back in the office working? And let's face it, we're not going to get it right the first time round. And that's okay. We never usually get anything right the first time round. You know, that famous Thomas Edison who created about 350 light bulbs and he never saw each light bulb that he created that didn't work as a failure. He actually just saw it as one step further towards what was going to be a success. And it's, it's like the model of Kaizen, you know, that continuous improvement. And we will need to continuously review and improve. We will need to create endless light bulbs before we actually are lit up from the inside out that we're working. We're going to have to look at systems, processes, methods of communication in this new world. And in many cases, this can actually be a really exciting opportunity. Because how many organisations do just keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result? You know, where you have got systems and processes in place that haven't worked for a long time, maybe this is a real opportunity to say, okay, what is it that we need to have happen here? What is it that we want to achieve? What will let us know that we are operating at a level of success, of communication? What's going to let us know that, you know, apart from the the kind of usual traditional targets, what's going to let us know at that deeper level that everything is working in harmony, in synchronicity, that it flows? Yeah? So here are some suggestions from us to just get your brain firing and wiring in new ways, to go through that process of transformation of metamorphosis so that you can emerge on the other side. So step one, and I touched on this a little bit already, but step one is starting with the end vision. Ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve? I see this all the time with organisations that jump into problem solving mode rather than actually starting with the end vision. A bit like when an architect creates a house, they start with actually what is it that we're trying to achieve? What does it look like? So it's almost like a brilliant opportunity, again, getting that blank canvas out. What do you want to achieve? Not what the problems will be, not what the, yeah, but this isn't going to work and this isn't going to work, but literally start with that end vision in mind. Ask yourself as leaders, what is it that you're trying to achieve when it comes to your workforce in this new world of working? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What will be those key indicators that let you know that that vision is becoming a reality? What will you see? What will you hear? What will you experience on that day-to-day basis? 
You know, we hear words like inclusivity, diversity, connection, agility. But again, what does that actually look like? So once you've got your end vision in mind, what we would then encourage you to do as step two is look at your data. Now, any good CFO will always tell you, look at the data. And that data can be anything from customer complaints, delivery times, lead times, HR data, employee surveys, procurement, anything. The data that you have within an organization tells a story. It tells you a story of what's working well and what's not working well. And it gives you, uh, it gives you a reference point to be able to dig deeper. So where things are not working well, it gives you that opportunity to go behind that and say, okay, why not? What is the obstacle? What's getting in the way? Step number three, so once you've got your vision, when you've got your data, you know what story that you're looking at, do not throw jelly against the wall and hope that it sticks. So when it comes to your people and your workforce and your organisational culture, I absolutely ask you not to be tempted to start throwing jelly against the wall. You know, during lockdown, a lot of organisations, understandably, went into fight or flight response when it came to the well-being of their own people, of their own workforce, and how to support their workforce. And we spoke to so many organisational leaders and they were saying, you know, we need a webinar, we need a webinar on mental health. And it's like, yes, you do. But again, let's make sure that this is providing you with value. How are you going to measure this? How will you know that this webinar has been successful? How does this tie in with what other things that you're doing? You know, management mental health training. What impact do you need the training to have at an operational level, at a commercial level, at a strategic level? And we could see, you know, we could see HR leaders and wellbeing leaders and CEOs were almost kind of rabbits in headlights in some cases because they hadn't been asked those bigger questions. But once they were able to take a breath and work through that, they were able to make sure that the training that they received had the greatest value, the greatest impact, that we weren't in all cases just going in and just delivering something. Because as great as it is to, to provide people with things, what's going to create the real impact is tying it in with everything else and not as my favourite phrase is, throwing jelly against a wall and just hoping that it sticks. Because quick wins will immediately boost your workplace, but we need to be thinking about longer term actions that set your business up for the future, that give your business, your organisation, the wings to go the distance. Now, creating a culture of well-being when it comes to the well-being of your people, it doesn't happen overnight. And it doesn't have to happen all at once. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. We're still very much in new territory. And we can take things on that day-by-day -day basis. We can use the wonderful wisdom around Kaizen to put something into place to review, to monitor, and to consistently improve. And as long as we are going out there and we're looking at our hybrid workforce and we're looking at those, those small but consistent improvements, you will get to where you want to be. But if you just go in like a bull in a china shop and start throwing again money, uh, money, 
<laughs> well, you can start throwing money at us, that's not a problem. Start throwing jelly against the wall, then I guarantee that 18 months down the line, you're still going to be sat there scratching your heads going, we've got all of these problems and nothing's working. So if any of that resonates with you, if you're thinking, yeah, actually, how will we know that this has been a strategic success? How will we make these changes so that we have a perfectly flowing, in harmony, communicating work, workforce that are happy at home and at work and whatever, and you need some support with that, then please get in touch with us today at www.themindsolution.com and we'll look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye-bye for now. 